Today, we continue our player-by-player -player look at the Islanders' season by looking at defenseman Ryan Pulak. And we have some inside information to follow up on our discussion on Kyle Palmieri yesterday. All that and more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And hello, everyone, and welcome to the weekend edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast. So glad you could join us today. Thanks for being a part of the Locked On Islanders family and for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. And yes, that does include YouTube. So subscribe today and you'll get uh, each new episode in your inbox midnight, Monday through Friday. We've got a lot to talk about, but first, we want to hear from you. If you've got something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, a topic you'd like us to discuss on the show, feel free to send us an email. The email address is LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we talk about whatever it is that's on your mind. You can also follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Isles, and you can follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at Ice Wars, NYR VSNYI. We'll keep you up to date on all the latest Islanders news notes and happenings throughout what will be a pivotal offseason for this team from the draft to free agency, trade rumors, everything that happens to this team between now and the start of training camp in September. We're going to get things started today with a look at Ryan Pulak's season. Pulak uh, missed some time. And I think that really was the biggest story for him this year. And one of the things that, you know, so often you hear me talking about this Islanders team and you hear fans talking about this Islanders team and you ask, okay, what went wrong this season? And people talk about COVID and they talk about, uh, the 13-game road trip, and, and I've mentioned the lack of a puck-moving defenseman outside of Noah Dobson, and, and all of those things are true, and they are all factors, and then you can go to needing another goal scorer and, and, and improving the power play, although that did finally happen late in the season. But one thing that gets overlooked, and I wanted to talk about it, is that Ryan Pulak, one of the team's top two defensemen, Missed 26 games this season. And that hurt this team significantly. Uh, when you're without, look, the Islanders are a defense first team. And they played, you know, 26 games without one of their top two defensemen. Some games without both of them. But losing Ryan Pulak really, really hurt this team. And you, you look at the numbers and there's just no doubt that he was missed uh, when he was out of the lineup. In 56 games this year, five goals, 21 points. He had an even plus minus, uh, which is the lowest he's had since 2018. But again, because the team struggled, that is uh, not bad even. Only two Penalty minutes. Two of his five goals came on the power play. Four of his 16 assists. He took 122 shots in 56 games. So that's about, uh, you know, two, a little less than two and a half shots on goal per game. Uh, his shots attempted 226. That's about a little more than four a game. And he averaged 21 minutes and eight seconds of ice time. And part of that, no question, uh, that's his low, again, his lowest number since 2018. Part of that definitely has to do with the fact that he missed games due to injury, had to sort of play himself back into shape. And, you know, he played a lot of games early, but on November 15th, he ends up leaving that game against Tampa Bay, 
and doesn't return to the lineup until February 1st. And originally, you know, the report was six to eight weeks. Well, six to eight weeks ended up becoming three, a little more than three months. And that really, truly did hurt the Islanders. And you, you look at his average minutes per game early in the season, before the injury, 22 and a half, 22 04, 21, 25.08 in, in a shootout game, 23 27. And then after the injury, uh, first game back, 15 08. Uh, you have a 16 55, lower numbers initially. And you don't see those numbers really picking up until, you know, mid March, let's say. And that's when he sort of started to get back to full strength. And let there be no doubt about it, the Islanders really rely on Pelic and Pulak to, to be anchors of this team. And the fact that he played 56 games, the same number he played in 2020-2021, which was obviously a COVID-shortened season, uh, had five goals as opposed to two, one more assist. Uh, you know, you saw when he was healthy, he remains one of the better players on this team at 130 blocked shots and 86 hits. And again, I think the physicality, the number of hits a little lower based on the fact that he was not healthy, missed time and was affected uh, by that, at least when he first came back. So, the Islanders really need a healthy uh, Ryan Pulak. Again, if he doesn't miss 26 games, do the Islanders make the playoffs? Probably still the answer would be no, but are they still in the playoff hunt a little bit longer? I think the answer to that may very well be yes. And going forward, uh, you know, the Islanders definitely have Two, I'd say, well, they have three defensemen who they definitely consider part of the core. And that's Pelic, Pulak, and Noah Dobson. Scotty Mayfield, maybe not core, but definitely an everyday player who deserves to be uh, out there, game in and game out. And then you have, do you get Andy Green back? Do you get Zdeno Chara back? Does Robin Salo step up? All those questions still sort of remain to be answered. But in my mind, uh, Pulak will be back next year. He's under contract long-term. He will be a top pair defenseman and a player who will easily log, you know, 21, 22, maybe even 22 and a half, 23 minutes a game and be one of the leaders on this Islander team. So in my mind, you know, Pulak right now, he'll turn 28 in October, right around the beginning of the season, October 6th. Uh, to me, he's in his prime uh, as a, a, a tall six foot two, 220 pound defenseman. He should have several years left before he starts to wear down. And he is a very, very valuable part of the Islanders future short term and probably for the next, let's say, three to five years, because he really is that good of a, of a shutdown guy. And I'll tell you, when you team Pulak and Pelik together, you really have one of the best defensive defenseman pairings in the National Hockey League. We saw the praise for them, the recognition for them finally starting to happen when the Islanders went to the conference finals two years in a row and I think it'll happen again when these two are healthy and playing, you know, 70, 75, 80 games next season, which hopefully will be the case. We've got a lot more to discuss. We have a, a listener email regarding some of the things we discussed yesterday about Kyle Palmieri that I think you'll find interesting. We'll go over that. Plus, we have our Islanders birthday of the day, a reliable defenseman who played for the team in the mid to late 1990s. All that and more still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. 
Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. You can find all the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's basketball championship matchup, the NHL hockey conference finals, Major League Baseball, and of course, all the latest fighting news from MMA and UFC to boxing. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting esports and more hey you could check out who's going to win some of the nhl awards who's going to win the stanley cup uh lots of futures out there for the nfl lots of things to check out at betonline.net head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action bet online where the game starts We have an important favor to ask you. We've put together a a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcasts even better. This is an opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about Locked On podcasts. So go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take very long and everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards To take our audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey, and thanks for your help. So I got a a great email from uh, Matt from Massapequa, love the alliteration, and Matt says, "Uh, been a listener to Locked On Islanders this season and just wanted to say I love what you do. You really are my first listen of the morning when getting ready for work. I just wanted to comment on the Palmieri spot, my co-season ticket partner, Uh, His son is married to a family member of his, so I have a little inside information. Most people don't know. Palmieri was hurt most of the first half of the season. Before he ended up on the IR, he was dealing with an injury for most of the first half, and it really limited his production. Finally, he got healthy in mid to late January, which is when things got better. Also, maybe I missed it. Also, you didn't mention how he had seven goals taken away from him by review and some of them were very questionable. Well, Matt, thank you so much for the email and for the kind words. I really do appreciate that very much. And, you know, a lot of people did suspect that there was something going on with Palmieri as far as his health was concerned. I tend to be uh, cautious about making pronouncements like that. Unless I have specific info I don't want to just go out and say, oh, yeah, it looks like Palmieri's hurt. Maybe he is. Now you're giving me a little inside info, which I'm happy to pass along to listeners. And yes, there was a big difference in the way Kyle Palmieri was able to play in the first half of the season, one goal through the first 29 games and in the second half. And I have never questioned Kyle Palmieri's toughness, Kyle Palmieri's desire, and the way he goes about playing the game. Uh, It's just that the results were not there. And if there was an injury that was a factor in that problem, uh, it certainly deserves to be mentioned. Now, Matt, you mentioned the seven disallowed goals, and I agree with you. Uh, Those disallowed goals were frustrating as anything. And it really, you know, let's even say five of those seven goals get allowed. And yeah, some of them were questionable, borderline at worst. Uh, That would give him 20 goals in 69 games. And when you consider he was playing hurt uh, through a lot of that, uh, that's not a bad season. But unfortunately, officially, those goals did not count. Were they fair? Not all of them, I don't think. Uh, We talked about them, you know, the day after they happened when we were discussing those individual games. And Yeah, there's no question that, you know, he couldn't buy one sometimes. It was it was almost like when he did score a clean goal and you were like, okay, in the back of your mind, how are they going to take this one away from palms? Because it it just seemed like any time he scored, that's what happened to him. So uh, that definitely does deserve to be mentioned. And I did not mention it yesterday. I should have. So thank you, uh, Matt, for bringing that back up and letting me know about it. I still don't think at this stage in his career, Kyle Palmieri is a legitimate first line winger. Uh, If you add back, 
if you take into consideration his injury and you add, you know, some of those seven goals to his goal total, if he's healthy and he's playing well, could he still play on the second line and be a, a good second line winger? Yes. Do I think that he would be best suited for that overall? Yeah, I do. It's just a question of him proving that when he's healthy, he can still get the job done. I think he did a pretty good job of showing that he can get the job done later on in the season. Uh, but he's got to, again, prove that in training camp to get that done. And, you know, he really did make a nice jump back late in the season. And he had that that streak where, uh, you know, he, he just in March was on fire. Uh, and, and that was a good thing. I mean, just to see him score seven goals in the month of March and then sort of carry that over into early April, getting back the Kyle Palmieri that this team knows, you know, he, the player he can be was one of the reasons why going into, let's say, the end of uh, March, the Islanders had a glimmer of hope that they could, you know, put some wins together and get back into the playoff picture. He was definitely a part of that uh, stretch from about March 10th to the very beginning of April, where the Islanders were probably playing their best hockey of the season. And uh, look, I hope Kyle Palmieri, if he is an Islander again next season, comes back with gangbusters and, and returns to his previous form. Again, uh, just two years ago, 2019, 2020, he scored 25 goals. Uh, since then, he scored 25 in the last two seasons combined. Now, one of those seasons was shortened by COVID. One of those seasons was shortened by his injury and by COVID. So uh, at least Palmieri's season was shortened. So yeah, uh, you know, he has a lot to prove. And I think this year's training camp and the early part of the season are going to be very important for Palmieri. He is 31 years old, still should have a few years left to be a solid contributor before he starts to wear down. And I just wanted to mention that. So Matt from Massapequa, thank you so much for that email. It was very insightful and appreciated. And I'm happy to pass that information along uh, concerning Kyle Palmieri. And hopefully we'll see more of the uh, Kyle Palmieri we were used to seeing during his prime with the New Jersey Devils uh, and even before that with Anaheim. But really his best hockey was with New Jersey. We have got more to get to on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. We've got our Islanders birthday of the day and a few more thoughts still to come. So uh, stay with us. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Time now for our Islanders birthday of the day. And we're going to go back to the mid to late 90s. Uh, today is the 56th birthday for former Islanders defenseman Doug Huda. Huda Six foot two, 210 pounds, uh, a native of Blairmore, Alberta, uh, drafted by the Detroit Red Wings in 1984 in the second round. And Huda was a competent offensive defenseman in juniors. He had a 20 goal, 74 point season his last year in the Western League. Uh, and then uh, also in the AHL, put up a 42 point season. But in the NHL, he was a little bit more of, of, of a defensive-oriented kind of a guy who typically put up uh, triple-digit penalty minutes in a season. Uh, stayed with the Red Wings through the 90-91 season where he joined the Hartford Whalers, then played for the LA Kings, Buffalo Sabres, and then joined the Islanders early in the 96-97 season. And was traded to the Anaheim Mighty Ducks midway through 97-98, later played for Detroit and Buffalo again. Uh, in his career, 
561 NHL games, 19 goals, 82 points, and yes, 1,104 penalty minutes. He added 18 playoff games, three assists, none of those games with the Islanders. And Huda has since gone on to be a reliable assistant coach uh, for the Boston Bruins and the Detroit Red Wings. He's been with Detroit since 2016, 2017, so he is still active in the National Hockey League. And, you know, Huda, uh, you know, hard to say who he reminds me of. Uh, I, I don't think he's quite like Zdeno Chara, even though 6'2", that's not 6'9". Uh, but he was sort of a, a, a solid defensive defenseman who could put up the occasional point. And we're going to go back and look at one of his better games with the Isles, December 26th. 1996 Fisherman Jersey time. Uh, Islanders hosting the New Jersey Devils at the Nassau Coliseum. Martin Brodeur, the goalie for New Jersey. Eric Fischo in between the pipes for your New York Islanders. And the Devils got on the board first. Steve Thomas scoring late in the first period. His six from Dave Andrichuk and Bobby Holik. Time of the goal, 1907. Islanders down one nothing. It stayed that way through the first two periods. But in the third, the Islanders answer. Our Islanders' birthday of the day, Doug Huda, ties the game just two minutes and 10 seconds into the third period. His second of the year, Derek King and Brian Smolinski with the assists. And then in the third period, the Islanders are shorthanded. Uh, there was a fight between Scott Niedermeyer, uh, Nicholas Anderson and Scott Lachance for the Islanders, Scott Niedermeyer and John McClain for the Devils. It all started when Nicholas Anderson uh, took a double minor for spearing, but the Islanders get a shorthanded goal out of that. Ziggy Palfi is 21st from Marty McGinnis. Islanders up 2-1 at 6.03 of the third period. Then Derek King extends the Islanders' lead, his 12th, Kenny Johnson and Rich Pilon with the assist. And an empty netter by Brian Smolinski, unassisted his ninth at 19.50, closes out the scoring. Islanders beat the Devils by a score of 4-1. to one. Uh, Eric Fischo, 25 saves. The Islanders outshot 26-24. For our Islanders' birthday of the day, however, Doug Huda, he had the one goal. He was a plus one, had two shots on goal. And uh, again, came up with that big tying goal that changed the momentum early in the third period. Wanted to talk a little bit about next week. We're going to start looking more at the upcoming NHL draft. We're going to start breaking down some prospects. And we're going to continue our player-by-player -player look up and down the Islanders roster. So make sure that you join us for that. I want to wish everyone a, a great weekend. Hard to believe we're into June already. Time really is flying by, but have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe uh, and enjoy what should be a great weekend. Thanks for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked On NHL. Locked On NHL covers the playoffs like no other, and you can hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. Enjoy the weekend, and of course, let's go. Islander.